Welcome into Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLuga. Thanks so much for tuning in here. We've got some Jaguars roster news. The Jaguars, according to Adam Schefter of ESPN, are signing edge rusher Rasheem Green. Very happy about this one. Very happy. We're going to talk about it. They're also signing Tanner Muse per Tom Pelissero of NFL Media. Tanner Muse is a linebacker, really a special teams guy. 11 tackles on special teams in three years in the league so far. So, going to talk about these two roster moves here today. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out genjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear, become a channel member here on YouTube. So looking at these two moves, obviously the Jaguars waived uh, Riley Patterson. Kicking competition is over. Cam Little is the kicker. So you now had a roster spot cleared up by that. I'm not sure if the Jaguars were at 89 how they're signing both of these guys, if there's like a subsequent move incoming that's going to happen to free up room for one of these guys, if there's someone who is going to be hitting injured reserve, or I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen, right? But the Jaguars are signing Rasheem Green and Tanner Muse. We'll start off with Rasheem Green. This is a player who I pegged as a potential candidate for the Jaguars to sign a few weeks back when I was taking a look at the edge rushers that were still around. And I've been adamant about the Jaguars signing another edge rusher throughout the offseason. Like, yes, you you signed Miles Cole. I'm aware of that. Or you drafted Miles Cole out of Texas Tech, right? I don't think he's ready to contribute in year one. I really don't. He's a project who is an athletic freak, a physical freak, unbelievable size and length and all that good stuff. But I don't think he's ready to contribute. Yasir Abdullah now, who the Jaguars drafted last year, is more of a hybrid edge slash linebacker player fighting for a roster spot at this point. I think he's done some decent things so far in camp, but he's not a true edge uh, for this defense. So Rasheem Green, he's 27. He is big. He is strong. He has arm length. That sounds like a lot of the Jaguars uh, edge rushers that they've had around here under Trent Baalke. Sounds like a lot of the edge defenders that you have seen Ryan Nielsen employ in both Atlanta and New Orleans, right? So it makes sense. He's six foot four, 280 pounds, 33 and three quarters inch arms, a good athlete at his size. He's a big boy that can move, that has length. And he's had at least two sacks in every season in limited action as a role player each of the past five years. 19 total sacks in his career. He entered the league really young. Like he's already going into year seven this year. And he just turned 27 a couple months ago. So this is a guy who has a lot of experience, but also also is pretty youthful, right? Um, In terms of his age, one of the reasons that I have been excited about the possibility of potentially adding a Rasheem Green, um, even when comparing him to guys who have done it longer and had bigger, more productive seasons, you look at when he has been given the opportunity to really, uh, to really rush the passer a lot. And you've seen him come up with sacks. You absolutely have. Last year in Chicago, didn't get as many opportunities uh, as he did prior to that in Houston and Seattle. But you look at 2019, and we'll look at these PFF sacks. PFF, one thing that they do well that I appreciate is if you have a half sack, that counts as a full sack when you're tallying up the sack totals, because that tells you how many times you got to the quarterback, right? That tells you uh, how many times you made an impact on the quarterback. Whereas a half sack, like if a guy goes out there and, and hits the quarterback 12 times, but each one is a half sack, he's only given six sacks. That doesn't really represent the amount of times he got to the quarterback, in my opinion. So uh, I appreciate how PFF tallies it. 2019, second year in the league, 376 pass rush snaps five sacks. 2020, 277 pass rush snaps, two sacks. Not as impressive. In 2021, his fourth year in the league, according to PFF, you know, where they count half sacks as whole sacks, he had eight sacks, 34 pressures on 514 pass rush reps. 2022 went to Houston, and that's a year where I saw him play a lot, obviously, uh, playing against the Jaguars twice and having to study him for those games. Uh, 269 pass rush reps, five sacks. 
26 total pressures. And then last year in Chicago, two sacks on 225 pass rush reps, 14 total pressures. So the numbers aren't like eye-popping. Absolutely, they're not. But you're not signing him to be a starter. You're signing him to be a contributor. And so he's not someone who's going to change the game for the Jaguars' defense in some major way. Uh, Most of the time, with this defense, you're going to have Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker on the field. Those guys are going to play a lot of snaps. They're too good to have off the field for too long, right? But this is a player that gives the Jaguars a chance to have a competitive top four at edge, right? Josh Allen, Trayvon Walker, going to be on the field a ton. Travis Gibson is someone who has done it in this league at a fairly high level, right? Rasheem Green is another player who has experience rushing the passer, getting after the quarterback, taking reps in a defense in a rotation. And so to me, this is an upgrade for 2024, an upgrade that allows them to potentially have four quality edge defenders. I don't think Miles Cole was going to be that as a rookie. I don't think that uh, Yasir Abdullah was going to be that. I don't think that DJ Coleman necessarily is that, even though the Jaguars like DJ Coleman. So you see where I'm going with this? Like The Jaguars now have four guys who have taken legitimate snaps in the NFL at edge. And I think Travis Gibson and Rasheem Green can push each other. I think that they can compete to be the third guy in that rotation. And whoever is the third guy or fourth guy, they are going to have earned their spot, in my opinion. So I think this was a great move for the Jaguars. I'm really excited about it. And the reason I'm excited about it is because you have to have waves of pass rush. You have to have guys that if they need to come in and play a lot of snaps, they can. And I think Travis Gibson and Rasheem Green can both do that. I did not feel confident in what could potentially happen if you had an injury up front at edge. Now I feel a lot better knowing that these guys have played in the NFL. They are professionals. And each one of them, not consistently, but at times, has been very effective. Right? And they have prototypical traits that Trent Baalke looks for, prototypical traits that, um, that Ryan Nielsen looks for. So I'm excited about it. Again, it's not some game-changing move, but it's a move that gives you insurance, and it's a move that, uh, to me, again, adds quality depth. You have to have a rotation up front. Even though Josh and, and, and Trayvon are going to be on the field a lot, I know I said Josh Allen, I should say Josh Hines Allen, they're going to be on the field a lot, but you're going to have to have guys rotate in there, and you want guys that can rotate in there and actually make an impact. Somewhat ironically here, um, Rasheem Green spent last year in Chicago. One of the guys that Chicago kept over, Travis Gibson, and then Travis Gibson had to decide where to sign on, signed with Tennessee, didn't get a lot of run, um, but uh, both of them end up here in Jacksonville for the 2024 season. To me, both of these guys should make the team. I obviously haven't seen Rasheem Green on the practice field, but I have seen him play. He's an impressive player as as a rotational guy. He has no doubt about it. Um, two seasons over the last uh, over the last five, and really, if you count the PFF stats, three out of the last five seasons, he has had five sacks. So this is a guy who has a chance to contribute to a quality rush, right? And Ryan Nielsen's probably gonna get the best out of this guy. That's kind of what he does. Now, looking at Tanner Muse again, he's a back-of-the-roster type of guy, depth player, very good special teamer. Again, has 11 tackles the last three seasons. He does have the connection from Clemson with some of those Clemson guys on the roster, Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne. They played together there at Clemson. I'm not sure if an injury prompted this move or what exactly the situation is there at the back of the linebacker room because they have guys that they like and they're deep at linebacker. Obviously, you have your two starters, Foyer and Devin. Um, You have Chad Muma, Ventrell Miller. I did mention this earlier. I did see him limp off the field earlier. I'm not sure what that is, if there's anything to that. I don't want to speculate, but it'll be interesting to see what's going on at linebacker uh, with Tanner Muse being added to the mix if there's going to be a subsequent move. Um, in that regard, but we'll see how it plays out. Excited Rasheem Green is here. 
And there's nothing wrong with Tanner Muse being added to the roster. This is a guy that has experience on special teams, and you can always use good special teamers. Has the connection with Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne. Would love to know what y'all think about these two moves. They are not earth-shattering, but I do think adding Rasheem Green was a necessary move for the Jacksonville Jaguars, a move that makes me feel just a little bit more confident in their depth, uh, both in the rotational aspect of it and in case of injury, right? So... Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out genjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear. Become a channel member here on YouTube. Y'all have a good one.